meeting um, Tuesday, December 13th in um, City uh, Council Chambers. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, uh, Ms. Repia, would you please uh, read the roll? Here. 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 Member Davis. Here. Member Anger. Here. Member Moore. Here. Member Kopman. Here. Member Ellingbow. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, uh, item on the agenda is approval of the meeting agenda. Um, do we have anyone who would like to offer um, additions or corrections? I move for approval. Second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, you, you've also received uh, minutes from our November 7th uh, meeting. Um, I'm assuming everyone's had the opportunity to review them. Do we have any um, additions or corrections that anyone would like to offer? Hearing none, um, do we have a motion? I'll move that we approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The um, next section of the meeting is um, called community comment. And we um, ask residents um, to discuss any issue, new issue that hasn't been discussed in a previous meeting recently or isn't slated for a future consideration. Um, and any items that are not on the, um, items on the agenda we will talk about later. Um, people are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. Um, and we may limit the number of speakers on any issue. Um, are there any members of the community that would like to make a comment at this point? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will move to the next section, which is uh, reports and recommendation, certificate of appropriateness for property at 4907 Arden Avenue. It's a request for a new front entry canopy. Ms. Rep, you have a report. Thank you very much. What'd you say? All this fancy technology. There you go. Thank you. The subject property is located on the east side of the 4900 block of Arden Avenue, and the existing home is a Mediterranean Spanish colonial style, and it was constructed in 1925. The certificate of appropriate request is for an addition of a new protected front entry canopy, and this is a portrait of the uh, a photo of the big, uh, front of the home. Here you see a streetscape, and again another streetscape. The proposed 55 square foot front entry canopy requires a certificate of appropriateness because it is a structural change to a street facing facade of the home. The stoop is shown to be 9 feet wide and projects 4 feet 11 feet in inches from the house. Uh, six and feet one half inch, including the steps. The new canopy is designed to not only provide protection at the front entry, but also correct a flat front facade with an entry door and side lights that are currently not in uh, proportion with each other. The design provides a hip roof clad in clay tiles, stucco posts supporting the arched front and side openings, and wrought iron railings, all complementing the architectural style of the home. And you can see here is the front view, and here you see it from the side showing the wrought iron railings. Uh, 
both on the side in the keyhole opening and on the stairs. Here you see a, a overhead plan showing the dimensions of the overhang. And I will note that they are going to uh, be providing a covered overhang with a clay tile roof for in the rear of the house. It isn't visible from the street facade, thus it isn't included in this certificate of appropriateness request. You can see here we're comparing just the front entry of the subject home in the middle with the properties on either side. Um, they have a covered front entry to of the south uh, that projects somewhat further out from the front building wall and then the property to the north does not have a front entry but the steps do project six feet out from the building wall. Consultant Vogel reviewed the plans and observed that the new work is compatible in size, scale, building material and architectural character with this historic house. Furthermore, no historic Architectural features will be removed or destroyed, and the exterior alteration should not impair the historic significance or integrity of the nearby historic homes. Staff recommends approval of the plans for the front entry canopy. Findings supporting the recommendation include the front entry canopy will complement the architectural style of the home and not be detrimental to the adjacent historic properties and the information provided supporting the subject certificate of appropriateness meets the requirements of the plan of treatment and the zoning ordinance. Um, approval of this certificate of appropriateness request is recommended subject to the plans presented. And with that, do you have any questions? I have a question. Uh, when I look at what is sheet P1.2, it appears that the house to the north does have some sort of an overhanging entry um, and it said in one of the reports and I think you said that that house didn't have any. Now maybe, perhaps I can't see very well on this picture but it does appear to you me. Are, you are correct. Okay. So there is some sort of a, an entry area albeit smaller than the proposed one. Correct. May I ask if the existing entrance is original? the grill work above the uh, doorway, the windows on either side of the door, do we know? Andy Campbell from M.A. Peterson Design Build is here this evening and perhaps he could address that. Thanks. Um, based to our knowledge, we're not sure if that, that iron grill work is original. Um, you know, it's kind of tacked on there and it's not very substantial. So yeah, I guess your guess, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I would guess that the side lights on either side of the door are not original though. Thank you. Do we have any more questions, Ross? Um, uh, no questions, sir. I, um, I'd like to move we approve. Subject. I, I second. Um, any other discussion before we vote? There's a minor difference in the perspective compared to the elevation. The elevation shows, shows a leg extending down on the face of the building and the perspective doesn't. So Correct. I think either is fine, but you just might want to clarify expectations. Correct. The, uh, um, <clears throat> the perspective is not as current as those plans so that the actual design will have that little leg that you okay. Is there any other discussion? We have a motion on the floor. Um, I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thanks. Congratulations. Now we will move to our second certificate of appropriateness for 4511 Bruce Avenue. Um, a new detached garage in the rear yard in addition to the rear south side of the house visible from the street facing facade.
the subject property is located on the east side of the 4500 block of Bruce Avenue. The existing home, an Italian Renaissance revival style, was constructed in 1924 and currently has a two-car detached garage accessed by a driveway on the north side of the property and set back 20 feet from the rear property line. The certificate of appropriateness is request is twofold. The first component of the plan entails construction of a new detached garage in the northeast corner of the rear yard. The second element includes a 459 square foot two-story addition to the rear and sides of the home. You can see here the garage, the new garage is shown uh, to be set back into the northeast corner of the yard, as we said. Uh, the existing garage is t currently 20 feet from that rear yard. Uh, the um, addition is shown to the rear and south of the existing home, projecting um, in this corner. The plans for the garage call for the demolition of an existing 380 square foot uh, detached structure. and. Uh, constructing a 576 square foot garage, um, again 4.5 feet from that rear lot line. Um, this, the additional 15.5 feet that will be created in the rear yard will provide much more living space for the family in their rear yard. The plan does call for continuing the use of the driveway on the north side of the property and an additional curb cut will not be required. The design of the proposed garage complements the uh, Italian Renaissance revival architectural style of the home with a 12-4 hip roof, asphalt shingles, stucco clad walls with brick wainscot and a freeze board and dental moldings. The two uh, 9 by 8 cedar overhead doors are proposed for that um, front or west elevation and a single 7 by 8 cedar overhead door is proposed for the south elevation, and again, you show, see the brick wainscoting uh, replicated from the house shown on that south elevation. The height of the hip roof is shown to be 13.5 feet at its highest peak, which is a height that meets the standard required for new garages in the district. And you can see here the uh, garages adjacent on both the north and the south side are depicted here. and. Um, the uh, average uh, for this garage could be as tall as 13 feet, uh, 10 and a half inches, and it's shown at 13 feet, 6 inches. Uh, attention to detail with the wainscot and windows or doors is demonstrated on the west and the south elevation. The north elevation, which is shown here, as well as the east elevation, do not show similar architectural detailings because they directly abut a six-foot privacy fence. And you can see this, the uh, six-foot fence is, uh, you can see where it, it would be right here. And there, the garbage uh, receptacles are, will be stored there. And um, uh, due to the fence and the pl uh, place for garbage, they uh, justified that they would not need any windows or doors. And again, here you do see that that's the, uh, east or the rear of the structure. Uh, um, addressing a two-foot reduction in grade from the house to the rear lot line, the plans also include a two-foot retaining wall along the entire rear or east lot line to flatten out the remaining yard and control the overall drainage so that two-foot uh, retaining wall would be along that rear lot line. A two-story uh, addition is demonstrated um, Let's see. Oh, let's see. Here we go. The plans also call for that two-story addition, as I explained, on the rear and the south side. Um, it's going to be a 459 square feet uh, footprint with 918 square feet of living space added to both uh, the rear and the south elevations of the home. The addition will extend 9 feet 3 inches from the south and uh, 12 feet from the rear of the home. The uh, addition will be set back six feet from that north wall of the building. So you really, if you were driving down the street, you wouldn't really, from the street facade, see the addition from the north. It's from the south where you would really uh, view the addition. Uh, we are starting with the south elevation. This is the existing uh, 
south elevation of the home as you see it today. Um, you can see there's the brick chimney that is going to be replaced. And this is what they're proposing. If you recall in the previous slide, the, the chimney was right about in this location where the addition is proposed. So they've moved the chimney and over into this area. And, and this space in here is actually 11.25 feet uh, and uh, is set back and it's providing somewhat of a patio area here with French doors coming off of that uh, living room. Um, the you can see here the uh, plan calls for uh, the, hip the original hip roof will tie into a second hip roof and the flat roofs of the addition uh, are, will no longer be existing. And they've added a cupola or a monitor uh, in this area between the two hip roofs. And to, the purpose for that would be to provide additional um, daylight into a stairwell area. The, um, this is a second um, plan that was proposed for that south elevation. And the only change here are in the windows you see here. They're proposing, instead of having the six windows across, to have the two center windows be wood panels. And that's to um, allow for um, well, the gas fireplaces in this location. And I think there's going to be shelving um, involved with that. This is the rear, the east or the rear elevation of the home as it exists today. And uh, it's always interesting to compare these plans with photographs. This is a photograph of what the rear looks like today. You can see there were some additions to the home on the second story, both in, uh, you can see them in both look, uh, photos. They have um, pretty contemporary windows and flat roof, which isn't real practical in our um, climate. And this is the uh, proposed east elevation showing the French doors. Again, you can see how the addition will be set back six feet. So um, this, this portion where you have a side door actually projects closer to um, the west and then the addition is sets back further. Uh, this is the, um, the existing west elevation or the front of the home. And there's a photograph of how it looks. And this um, depicts the uh, home with the addition. Again, you can see the 11.25 foot patio with the um, uh, French doors. And at the top, again, you see the cupola that they're proposing. This is the north elevation, and this is the elevation that runs along the driveway area. And this is what's existing today. And this is what they are proposing. Again, you can see how the addition is set back six feet. Uh, preservation consultant Robert Vogel uh, reviewed the plans and determined that um, the plans for the new garage match the architectural character of the house and should not visually detract from the property's historic character. Although the age of the existing garage is unknown, it would not qualify as a significant heritage preservation resource. Mr. Vogel further observed that the subject house is not individually eligible for designation as an Edina Heritage Landmark, but it does contribute to the historic significance of the district as a whole and is therefore worthy of preservation. It is ideal to see new, new additions to historic homes kept to a minimum and designed so that they are architecturally compatible in scale, building materials and texture with the primary or street facade. The plans appear to do just that, with the addition not drastically changing the scale or character of the home. Regarding the proposed cupola, Mr. Vogel pointed out that this kind of feature was historically seen on Greek Revival and Italianate-styled homes, which predate development in the Country Club District by 50 to 100 years. Small towers also occasionally appear on Spanish eclectic-style houses during the early 20th century. However, there do not appear to be any found locally. Mr. Vogel concluded that the rooftop cupola was design, as designed would not be considered contextual with the Edina Country Club District. Mr. Vogel summarized that the addition, the new garage, and the minor exterior alterations, excluding the cupola, should not have an adverse effect on the historic character and integrity of the historic house or neighborhood. 
The owners have made a reasonable effort to preserve the property's distinctive architectural characteristics while adding more living space and enhancing the Mediterranean, Mediterranean flavor of the primary facade. Uh, in conclusion, staff recommends approval of the detached garage subject to the plans presented and the placement of a year-built plaque on the exterior of the structure. Findings supporting that recommendation include the plans provided with the subject uh, request clearly illustrate the scale and scope of the project. The proposed garage will match the architectural character of the house and will not visually detract from the property's historic character. And the information provided supporting the subject certificate of appropriateness meets the requirements of the zoning ordinance and the country club district's plan of treatment. Regarding the plans for the new addition, the plans appear to be compatible with the original structure and should not destroy or obscure any important historic character defining features of the home. Furthermore, the addition does not appear to drastically change the scale or the character of the historic home. That being said, the proposed rooftop cupola, which may be found on some Italian at homes, is not consistent with the architecture found in the Country Club District. Staff recommends that the board approve the certificate of appropriateness for the addition with the condition that the rooftop cupola is either removed or designed to be less imposing. Findings supporting the recommendation include the proposed cupola is not contextual with the architecture of homes in the Country Club District. The plans provided with the subject request clearly illustrate the scale and scope of the project. And the information provided supporting the subject certificate of appropriateness meets the requirements of the zoning ordinance and the Country Club District plan of treatment. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Joyce, I, I believe we also received a letter um, regarding the project. Can we, do you want to talk about that or should well, I? Well, why don't you just explain the, uh, the address and... Um, okay. Um, uh, the, there are neighbors that live next door at uh, 4513 Bruce Avenue. They've uh, sent a letter indicating that they would not be able to attend the meeting tonight, but they have reviewed the architectural design and they uh, express support for the project. Thank you. Joyce, you said that the purpose of the cupola is to provide light on the stairwell. Is, is that the only purpose, plus I'm sure some aesthetic value? Well, correct. From so the, there's nothing, from what I could tell, there's nothing going there. It's just an opening that provides light. Is that right? That's my understanding, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. well, couldn't that be done easier with just a skylight that wouldn't be visible at all from virtually anywhere? Potentially. Excuse me. Uh, what is the height of the proposed addition with the cupola on top, and how does that vary from surrounding houses? Well, the height of the cupola I only find one, uh, and it's the south elevation, but it doesn't give the whole Perhaps the architect can better answer your questions about the structure? Sure. Mr. Hansen is here today. Good. Um, wh when you s start speaking, would you introduce yourself in full name and whatever? Uh, Eric Hansen. Thank you. Eric Hansen. The, um, the cupola height is approximately about five feet above the, the hip roof and it, it came up uh, with our changes for the upper, our upper level um, floor plan, which uh, are you, if everyone could look at the, the upper level, the upper level floor plan. I believe it's A12. Um, A10? A8 is the upper level floor plan. Yeah, this, this might be. Oh, is that the, the previous one? Y yeah, this was. Well, uh, 
Yeah, are you looking at the proposed upper level plan? Oh, yeah, it's A8 on our set. Okay. Um, uh, basically, you can see right here the, the, the triangular form, which is the, the monitor or cupola. Um, and what happened is the, the original stairway comes up this way and, and backtracks on itself. And this is actually the, the, the existing hallway. And so we incorporated uh, more square footage in the, in the bathroom. And then because of the addition on the south side, we, we created this sort of new hallway or, or gallery area. And by doing that, it sort of introduced this opportunity to pull, pull light from up above into, um, in, into that stairway, which obviously years ago, the, the wall was on that side and it wasn't symmetrical with uh, the main part of the roof. So I, I brought it up to the owners as sort of a design opportunity. And although it's you know not prevalent in the uh, country club area, the house itself, um, you know, sort of an eclectic revival of, of styles that you know appear from um, um, from other areas that were imported here in 1924, even though they were obviously hundreds of years earlier. So it fits in the overall context of a, a revival style. Um, and so that's why it was introduced, primarily to bring light into the upper level area. Um, I had talked to Joyce about the fact that uh, we would like to proceed with the project if, if everything is approved in the cupola. Um, we would be more than willing to uh, work with Joyce and, and, and you folks with uh, as far as the overall design, you know, should it be a segmented form? Should it have a metal roof on it? Should the, the, the cornice have not have dental molding? And we just haven't had time to research all that. I did uh, research some stuff over the weekend. I did find uh, a, a bunch of, um, which I think I sent one to Joyce. Um, and so, you know, so obviously they're, they're out there. I've, I've seen them. I just, um, it, it's, it's just something that I think would be appropriate. Actually, it's, it's about the size of this, this area in terms of form, about six feet square on diagonal. And so the top of it would be about, you know, about this tall. So in, in scale, it's, it's really not that big. It, it looks obviously bigger on just a straight on scale elevation drawing. Um, but in terms of the depth, um, it's, you know, it's like somebody standing on top of your roof, so. Um, As related to that, do you have a roof plan? Um, I, I There's do. There's something about the resolution of the roof that is not clear in the elevations. It's, it's basically two, you, you have the main, you have the yeah. main hip, you have the main hip roof here, and then you have the other hip roof sort of intersecting. Um, so this is, this is on, I'm part of that main, the main um, where the where the laundry room is right here, is the existing balcony. Right, there's some the elevations aren't consistent in terms of the way they show the roof as you wrap around the house, between one and the, and you know there's so either there's a cricket in there or there's something going on. Yeah, related. exactly. Yeah. So, but so that just feels a little. It'd, it'd be nice to have that clarified. Um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a smaller cricket right right in here. Okay, maybe you can sketch that. Um, just a roof plan, uh, but that, that could happen in a minute. I think regarding the cupola, I like the idea of the cupola. I think that it looks good on the house. Um, the question for me is how does it relate to the historic context of the neighborhood? So as an idea, I think it's nice. It would be great to have daylight in that center hall. As an independent object on the house, it looks nice. Uh, the scale of it, like you said, isn't that big, but it is not it isn't historic to the context of the neighborhood. So, you know, a little bit torn, because I do, as an architectural oh. element, like it, but, but not part of Yeah, it, it really, I told, what's in the I told Joyce, the owners, and, um, and myself, um, we're, we, like, we like it, or, you know, if it has to go, it has to go. Um, but it, I think it would, it, it, it's certainly uh, appropriate for the Renaissance uh, revival style, right. which, Although not part of the country club area, as far as the overall style, it's it's in character in that recent in yeah. that sense. So, I asked this question of Joyce earlier. Uh, couldn't you accomplish the same things in terms of internal lighting with some sort of a skylight arrangement? Um, sure, but then I think um, Mr. Vogel 
I would assume would say that is definitely not, you know, in keeping with the revival style. Because it wouldn't be visible. Uh, you would still see it from the uh, the north. You, you, it would still be visible from the north and south sides. Um, Couldn't you do it without, so that it wasn't visible? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's certainly possible. Um, well, it seems to me that the report from Robert, Mr. Vogel, seems to say pretty clearly that he's in favor of supporting the garage change, and he'd be in favor of supporting all the changes to the house except the cupola. Yeah, so all I'm asking is that if, if the, uh, the approval of everything that's drawn, with the exception of the cupola, if you guys feel like, you know, it shouldn't be there, then we can move forward. If you wanted to, I mean, we would like to explore it more, and uh, we just haven't had time um, to have it looked at again at a later, at a later date, um, you know, maybe at the next meeting. Um, and, at, and at that point, it was determined not to... Um, you know, it shouldn't be there, then we could, you know, just be done with it, so. Right, because it, it's that same debate about it. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, it becomes kind of precedent setting if we say yes to the cupola, because there are not others in the district. It, yeah. So then it's a, you know, it a, becomes a, a precedent for future projects. I've, I've done for that on, element to be part of other, the country club. On other projects, yeah. pri you know, primarily a shingle style home where, you know, a light, a light monitor as they're, as they're called. Sure, and it's um, the district that has historic preservation, not the individual houses. Right. And so, right. It, you know, so within that context, it's a little... Um, yeah, it's... Not, it's not, not an easy yes. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, I, I, it was, again, it was just a design mm -hmm. opportunity that mm -hmm. pop, right. popped up uh, based on moving the, the functional aspect of the stairway. So I think the rest of the project, the massing of the project, the idea that it's set back from the front facade and the front facade maintains its integrity is really nice. Um, curious about how the roof gets resolved, but I'm yeah. sure that there is some way. Yeah, there's a, you know, mm -hmm. obviously there's a, there's, a uh -huh. cricket, there's a cricket in there. But so. the composition of the facades and the, and the massing is, is great. It looks nice. Well, well, thank you. Um, we had looked at uh, a pergola, perhaps, on that front patio and, and determined, you know, that yeah. it, it didn't need it. Right, it doesn't seem like it needs it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's directly uh, accessible off the uh, dining room, so. Mm -hmm. Now, with, uh, my question was the height with the cupola and how the height of the home with that compares with the average height of the homes around it. Um, I would say the the neighbor's house to the to the north is um, uh, that's a full two story that's got a gable a gable on the north and south elevations. Um, the house on the right on the south side um, is also I think roughly a story and a half home with um, a gable on the north and the south. Um, so as far as the overall height, I would say that the the cupola would be fairly close to the ridge line of the um, the house to the north and and slightly taller than the um, house to the uh, to the south but our roof is is pretty shallow at a, at a 412 roof pitch where I think you know historically speaking most of the homes in in that area are probably roughly an eight eight to tw uh, 12 roof pitch you know with a gable gable and there's really, I, there's really not that many just straight up hip roofs, <laughs> um, you know, in the country club area. I, you know, I don't see a lot of them. Um, is the front, is the, are the two bedroom, the, the two upper windows on the front facade, is it truly an awning and a casement window? Co is that correct, that operation? yeah. Operation? Yeah, for egress, yeah. And why one awning and the other casement? Well, obviously, the, you can't get um, the casement could the, be the egress with, with, with an awning. So. so it's an awning that looks like a double hung. Correct, yeah, with the larger check rail. Um, so it looks like a, a small double hung. And so you need egress. Both of those are fulfilling egress, or you like the idea of it being awning? The casement fulfills the egress. What's the which is which? Well, uh, the casement just visually from the outside when it's opened up, it looks like a casement, an awning window. Um, you know, you can leave it open when it rains. It's a little up. odd to have a big awning window that looks like a double hung on the front facade. Um, uh, that, well, it's is there it's, is there an opportunity for egress around the corner of that? The the room on the on the south side. 
The south side has a casement. No, I'm sorry. Am I confused? North side. The north side has a casement. The north side has a casement. The front um, is an awning. Just uh, the owner, when, when it was opened up, um, he, he favored um, an awning versus a, a casement. So just... Yeah, it, it could be a double hung, but be, because we didn't want to change the height of it and we have to respond to if we touch it, it has to be, um, um, you know, an egress window. The options are to uh, do, do a casement. Um, uh -huh. And they're not grandfathering those in? No. Because there's enough change happening. Right. So wouldn't it be better if they're both the same operation on the front facade? Well, they look exactly the same. The details are exactly the same. Yeah, casement and a double, or casement and awning. Uh, when they uh, open, they won't look the same. Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it could, they could both they could both be casements on the front facade. Uh, yeah, they could. Yeah. Because the casement fulfills egress. Correct. Because that's what it's doing on you know if we're looking at the front facade, the right hand one is a casement window, R and it's it's meeting egress because the other two windows in that bedroom are small. Correct. Yes. Right? I don't know. I just I'd ask that question. Just if you have both, if you have the windows open. Yeah. I, you know, initially, yeah. It's an old house. It's a little odd. <laughs> it's. <you know. laughs> I, I I I would agree. So, uh -huh. uh, but uh, aesthetically speaking, they they look exactly the same when they're closed. Hmm. It's too bad they can't be grandfathered in as double hunks. Is what I say. But. I I would agree with that. <laughs> Because we'd like to keep them double hungs. But. Mm -hmm. Did you ask the city? Well, they're only, you know, four foot three mm -hmm. tall. So. But it is a renovate, renovation of an old house. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I highly doubt it. So mm -hmm. um, if, if they did, that would be great. But um, mm -hmm. during the plan review, I, I sort of expected them to say no, just because we're doing so much work. Mm -hmm. um, right. But we, I, I thought it was important to keep that datum line um, at the sill, which we introduced a band board to tie it tight. Right, it's nice. Tie, it's, tie yeah. in with everything yeah. else. Worth it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, I, I really I like the way it's done, except I, that cupola just really sticks out to me. <laughs> it, you know, I, I don't I don't see any of those at Edina, really, let alone in the Country Club District, and it just kind of sticks out. There's, there's a, if you know where Kings Highway is on the sort of mm -hmm. west or east side of Lake Harriet, there's, there's a few Mediterranean flavor houses there that have them. There's some... Um, uh, around uh, Kenwood area. Um. There's no doubt that it historically is, is yeah. nice, but as part of the district and the Thorpe Brothers and the whole history of this district of its time. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, had it's, it been there, you know, in 1924, if it wasn't sure, in, everyone would have said, hey, that's, that's cool, because I see it in California all the time when I go out there. Um, <laughs> and uh, ironically enough, when I did a, a a search for Mediterranean and Italian um, Renaissance homes, I found a whole bunch out in California, um, they just like, you know, like 486 images. So it was, um, which, you know, the, this particular style, well, the whole country club was um, pulled from all those, those styles. If we were to approve the plans uh, as is for both the garage and the house, minus the cupola, without addressing the issue for further need for lighting and how you would deal with that issue, uh, how would that strike you and your client? I, I think we're we're fine with that. We just, again, just uh, wanted to um, address it and and kind of see how you guys felt and about it. Because if you want to come back with a, another plan for something other than the cupola, uh, we can't stop you from doing that. So. No, I mean we like to you know keep moving because you know um, it, 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 we just got to keep moving with the drawings and, and the project. Um, uh, I did talk to Joyce about if if the board could give authority to her to review the documents um, and make an executive decision at, at another date, um, unless it all has to come back to the board again for review. I don't think it would all have to come back to the board, but if he's going to put a new, a different style cupola or a different style uh, addition onto the house, I think that would have to come back to, to us. 
I, I didn't know the you know the, the legalities of it. It was more like yeah, we'll we'll sketch some stuff so everybody is is satisfied with it. We we don't have a, an agenda like we have to have a cupola, but it'd be nice to see something that was you know uh, obviously more delicate. So um. I need to say that when I first saw the plans over the weekend, I thought to myself, no way, it's just not appropriate here. But the more I look at it, the more I find that it's really quite attractive. Frankly, I'm inclined to want to go ahead and, and approve the plan as it is. It's, and that's a problem with, uh, you know, not, is doing the straight on drawings and, and, you know, we thought we just didn't have time to do a 3D model, but even, even if we had done a fully rendered 3D model, I, I, I still think it, it doesn't convey the, the essence of, of um, the intent, I guess, with the design. So it's it's one of those subjective things that if you kind of let it sort of resonate a little bit and, and kind of go, well, I kind of get it. Um, we're not sure if the, it should have the dental molding on there and stuff, and maybe it should have a metal um, a metal roof versus like asphalt shingles or, or something like that. I, I think it's quite handsome. Um, I think the concern is just the integrity of the neighborhood and that it doesn't exist. I've seen it exist on other Italianate homes, and it's it's great. It's just the concern is, you know, would there be a flood of these in the neighborhood? Then would everybody we, we want, want one? Prevent, we want to prevent a flood of cupolas, I think, <laughs> into the neighborhood. Uh, greetings, I'm the homeowner. My name is Andy. Um, this is my childhood home, uh, so we moved into it when I was five, and so I think there are arguably few people who want to preserve the integrity of the neighborhood more, you know, than I do. And so we defer to you completely on the cupola. It was brought up as a, as an option. Like Mr. Davis, I had the exact same reaction when I saw it. I said, well, there's no way that's happening. And then when we looked at it and, you know, the house is up on a hill, uh, a small hill, and I think even standing on the sidewalk or even the street, it would be difficult to see. Um, and then lastly, the, the um, so I guess my message is we can take it or leave it. It's not a sticking point for us. Uh, maybe we can find a way to incorporate something. Maybe it's smaller. Uh, I think it does grow on you a little bit, but you're right, Gene, in that it sets a precedent, and you have to be careful about that. So uh, the recommendation was that the cupola either be removed or redesigned to be less imposing, and so we're open to either. I don't know how you redesign it and make it less imposing. It's not, you know, if you're going to have light on the side of the walls of the cupola, you can't get it a whole lot smaller and make it function. So I guess I'm not super optimistic about the redesign. Sure. Um, but, you know, never say never. Um, I haven't said anything. I, I believe that if um, we have a strong recommendation from our consultant that this would be a bad precedent. Um, we need to give some weight to that. Um, if you felt more strongly about it, it might be different. Um, but I, I personally see no reason to um, include it, um, given the consequence of doing so. Um, any other comments or comments? Uh, questions for the proponents. I would just like to see a roof plan at some point, but I don't think that's going to hold up approval or the vote or. Um. Well, I would move then that we um, approve the COA uh, with the amendment or change that there be no cupola on the roof. And if the uh, owner and architect want to come back with new plans for some other proposed changes in the roof or cupola or monitor, whatever you'd like to call it, We'll certainly consider it, but as for now, the approval would be contingent on removing the cupola. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, further discussion or questions? Um, seeing none. Um, well, last thing is to consider the operation of those front windows. Uh, would you like, well, do you want to offer an amendment that um, that be reviewed as part of the final plan? Uh, no, I just want the architect and homeowner to consider seriously 
that, that uh, they operate differently, whether that's a good idea. So. Not entirely comfortable with it either. Uh, the preferences you had indicated would be for double hungs to stay there. But mm -hmm. uh, I guess we're trying to work within the parameters of, of the code. Right. Within the same room, though, you have an awning and a casement. And on the front facade, there's an awning and a casement. So they could all be casements, and at least it would be consistent. Sure. It's just odd to introduce an awning that big on, a, on an old right. house. It's just even one step further from what would be considered an old house right. move. Yeah, that was the architect's recommendation, and I'm the one causing the problems on this issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Um, then I'm going to call the question. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay, record that in the minutes, please. Um, Member Davis um, as opposed. Um, but the, the motion carries. Um, thank you for your presentation you. and your, you. your patience. Before we move on, um, historic photos of the home were provided, and I'd like to show those to you. Let's see here. Well, let's go down here. Well, we're going the wrong direction, aren't we? Here, this is. Um, do you know what year this photo's from, Andy? This was, well, take a look at the car. That's probably 1926, <laughs> 27, perhaps. I find this very interesting. If you take a look at the garage for the home to the south, um, a very utilitarian structure, one, a one stall garage. Uh, something that we don't see a lot of in the Country Club District these days. So I find, as you take a look at these pictures, you need to look a little deeper. Take a look at the windows, too. Um, very consistent. Each room has the same kind of windows. Speaking to Jean's uh, concerns. Uh, wrong way. Okay. This is a little family that lived there at one time. I think that's the dining room, wouldn't you say? The, the side of the house. Uh, the, I want to say that's the southeast corner. Southeast corner. corner. And that, it's kind of blurry, but that looks like they're sitting in, it looks like a, almost like yeah, an Adirondack that's, type that's chair. the original owner, Tom Eureko. Tom Eureko, the original owner, sitting the in the... gardener with his grandson who grew up on Casco. Isn't that great? The trees are getting bigger, too. <laughs> now that looks like that's pretty old. That faces Arden Avenue. Okay. You can see lots of open spaces, too, in this photo. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. That's great to share those photos. Aren't they fun? Thank really you good. for sharing. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Moving on. Um, 6C, 2011 in review. Um, Ms. Repia has a presentation. 2011, we're at the end of the year already, and my, it's gone fast, and the Heritage Preservation Board's been very, very busy. And I'm not going to go detail every single thing that you've done, um, because time just doesn't allow for that. But basic things you did, you reviewed nine certificates of appropriateness for changes to homes in the Country Club District. That's pretty typical with what we're seeing. Since 2003, we have reviewed about nine or 10 per year. Um, in January and February, that's when January is when we really start working on the work plan. And we're going to, we're, I provided information for you this evening that we can start working, moving into our, Jan, our meeting uh, this coming January. But we're setting our goals and objectives. We're taking a look at our comprehensive plan as far as our long-term planning out 2020 and seeing how can we really start planning for making sure things get done. Um, this past, uh, in 2011, in February, we planned for an uh, open house with our Morningside neighborhood, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we sent out a, a bulletin to the neighborhood explaining the Morningside bungalow uh, study that was done. 
and we identified the homes. There were about 150 bungalows in the Morningside neighborhood. We presented a tour of the Morningside neighborhood that we took in the summertime uh, and uh, provided that tour for the people. And uh, we have it now available for anybody interested in uh, touring the Morningside neighborhood they can do. In February, we advertise for the uh, nominations to be received for the Heritage Award that's presented in May. So that gives people um, uh, February, March, and into April to submit their nominations. And um, it was uh, just a real wonderful opportunity for people to recognize uh, historic resources in the city that have really gone above and beyond pre uh, preservation. And then we had new member orientation uh, and uh, appointments during February. March, that's our annual meeting. That's when we appoint our officers. Um, we had our uh, open house for the uh, Morningside neighborhood. And we um, provided basic bungalow information. Uh, we explained the process for potential landmark designation of eligible homes. And again, we uh, reviewed what is a bungalow? We had uh, a lot of questions from people. Do I live in a bungalow? And it was really a good time to answer questions. Um, in April, we uh, chose the Heritage Award, and we planned for Preservation Month activities because May is Preservation Month. And uh, uh, the National Register of Historic Places and the National Trust, uh, they're all working. It's a national uh, month, not just for the city of Edina. And our city council joined the National Trust for Historic Preservation in a, a proclamation proclaiming May is Preservation Month. Um, we had an open house at Cahill School in the Grange Hall in collaboration with the Edina Historical Society. And uh, the Preservation Award was presented to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. It, this is their 75th year, and they've had over three additions to the church. And with each addition, they just took such care in ensuring that one addition blended into the original church. They just did a phenomenal job. And we're fortunate, at the end of the meeting, we have a movie that we're going to show of the actual construction. Um, Bob Moore, one of our members, uh, he'll explain it uh, in a little more detail toward the end of the meeting. Uh, but it's a fascinating 13-minute movie, and if you like old movies, this is just going to be a real treat. Uh, we entertained uh, the White Oaks neighborhood. They uh, came before the Heritage Preservation Board uh, with just questions about changes that are happening in their neighborhood. And so they hosted a tour you know, this past summer of the, the White Oaks neighborhood. And it was uh, very interesting when I sent out the map. I had everybody meet in a cul-de-sac, and I thought it would be a less traveled uh, street. And I thought, you know, people wouldn't get in, in, you know, traffic jams or anything. Well, uh, you know, when you're looking at a map, the topography of the land is very different. And I wound up uh, having everybody meet at the top of a very high hill, so it was, it was interesting. But I think the board really enjoyed seeing visually uh, an area that when you're looking at a map, it, it looks very different. And I think in the future, June and July, or July and August may be our uh, months to, to do tours and get out there and, and hit the pavement and really see what uh, the areas are like. Um, in September, uh, uh, Planning Director Teague did a presentation on massing and the history of what studies have been done about massing, uh, particularly with residential houses in the city of Edina. And I think it's very interesting for people in heritage preservation to be aware of these issues because it's something that the city's dealt with for a very long time. And some of the questions that people have uh, that they bring before the Heritage Preservation Board oftentimes do deal with the massing that's happening in these neighborhoods. And it's perhaps more than just the Heritage Preservation Board can, uh, can address. We've also this year been... Uh, talking about the Southdale Center that's been in the news quite a bit. And actually, the Southdale Center has been in the news for the Heritage Preservation Board since it started in 1976. Uh, the Southdale Center is the first enclosed mall in the country, and uh, the Heritage Preservation Board understands that to designate the mall a landmark district isn't practical. However, there are original artifacts within the mall that we're, we're wanting to identify and hopefully work with uh, the owners of the 
uh, center to see if we can't find some way to commemorate these original artifacts. Uh, September is also a time when we have our annual uh, preservation conference that the state puts on, and this year it was in Faribault. And uh, three of our members attended. It's a two-day workshop, and uh, three of our members attended that and reported back. And uh, anybody who attends these state workshops always says it was just such a worthwhile um, opportunity to meet your uh, fellow preservationists from around the state and find out what's happening. And um, moving forward, we're uh, just looking at trying to get a hold of our historic context in, uh, inventory. Right now, most of the, our files are paper files, and the Heritage Preservation Board has realized that we really do need to get an electronic database and to uh, perhaps uh, dovetail some of our plans, perhaps with what the state has. So we've got a subcommittee that will be working on that. And so that pretty much wraps up in a nutshell, what we've been doing for the past year and uh, moving forward, I think uh, looking to the future is what we would do. And Chair Stegner. Well, one thing that we're actually doing right now is yes. having our first Telfies meeting. Yes, which, uh, what a fun opportunity. Uh, to the audience, um, it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, <laughs> we, I think we've enjoyed it. Um, I, I wanted to um, give a little bit of recognition um, as part of our um, meeting. Um, first, our, I, I guess our, our newest uh, student members, um, um, Ellie, um, and Ellen Bow and Sammy Kaufman, thank you for being part of our group since September. Uh, we look forward to having you uh, continue into 2012. Um, many of us, I think, uh, have brought a lot of, you know, actually all of us have been bringing a lot of energy to our board and then also beyond our board doing um, other things for the city of Edina. Um, I wanted to kind of go through a few things that our individual members have been doing. Um, start with myself and try to be brief. Um, I um, had the enjoyable opportunity to uh, do two interviews in, during the year, one with uh, Ms. Repio on the Heritage Preservation Board, a very easy topic to um, talk about. Um, also more recently, um, and this is something that's also involved our members, I've been working at the City of Edina to do um, a survey looking at the satisfaction of board and commission members. And I can report um, that that first survey is now completed. We have about a 70% response rate across all the boards. I've looked at the data, it's very interesting. You'll hear more about that later. We are also doing a companion surveys of staff and of the, of the council and are trying to look at ways we can improve all of our board and co commission operations. Um, uh, Claudia Carr, who is uh, not here tonight, is vice chair of um, HPB. She uh, did an excellent job, I hear, in the one meeting that she filled in when I was gone. And one thing that she's done kind of special was that she looked at uh, conservation districts as a heritage preservation tool. Uh, Colleen Curran, who's also not here, um, volunteered for a completely different assignment. She was our representative on a human resources task force. Uh, there are service dollars available to local organizations and that group uh, made recommendations to the city council where the, the, that money would go. Uh, Jean Rank, uh, Ray Camp Larson, who is our architectural expert, um, you heard um, all, all the fine it, um, kind of observations he made, it's just very typical of what we've experienced this year. Actually, I don't think the rest of you probably know about this, spoke at a class in Edina High School this year in the history of housing in Edina. And um, I, I hope that was a good experience for you. Um, I'm sure the students had a lot of questions. Uh, Bob Schwarzbauer um, kind of was uh, the person who wanted to get clarity on the issue of what are we actually looking at when we're looking at homes. Do we just look at the front view right um, from the front door or is it more like a street view? And we um, took his good advice and we are looking at kind of a, a bigger slice of the house uh, than we would have in the past. 
Um, Ross Davis brought a new resource to the city. Um, he uh, talked with Country Club District uh, residents Clint and uh, Carolyn Schrader, who uh, donated a poster uh, from 1926 marketing the homes in the Country Club District. We really enjoyed seeing that at one of our meetings. And he's uh, also working on a project to uh, identify and preserve artifacts from Southdale. Uh, Terry Alstrom, who is not here tonight, is um, doing a second assignment. He's uh, on the Grandview Small Area Study Committee, and I think he is uh, going to leave the board after this year and focus on that. Um, we had another member do the same thing earlier in the year, <laughs> Chris Rockendall. And David Anger uh, was involved with the uh, nomination of St. Stephen Episcopal um, Church. Uh, he encouraged them to do so. We had reviewed them before had not selected them, uh, that considered them to be deserving, and he brought it back to our attention. He's also been working on uh, looking at artifacts at Southdale. And Bob Moore, well, you're going to see the movies brought in. Bob's come to the um, group recently and has uh, shared a lot of energy. Um, not, not to uh, have too long a monologue, but I have some more thank yous. Um, uh, Joyce Reppy has really been the person that's held our our team together. Um, I had a chance to look at the comments from the board survey, um, and Joyce just got rave reviews. Thank you. Um, I'm Very sure nice. she'll get to see those later, but um, we'll keep them a secret for now. Um, I, I, when I think of Joyce, I think of continuity and and creativity. Uh, she has new ways of presenting information, and it's from somebody who's actually worked with Heritage Preservation Board since. 1988, which is quite a few years. Uh, she's not quite, you know, a heritage resource herself. That would be 50 no, years, no. but um, <laughs> well on her way. Um, she all consistently brings intelligence, enthusiasm, and um, energy to her job. And I, I, I would also say that she has uh, what I'd call flawless preparation and follow-through. And she's particularly good with... Um, Working with people in the neighborhood, working with with the de uh, the developers to kind of get everyone on the same page. When I started on this board, things were qu quite combative at times, and uh, things are going very smoothly. And I give Joyce a lot of credit for that. Uh, Robert Vogel, our consultant, um, who's not here tonight, has also a long tenure with Heritage Preservation Board. He served since 1999. And basically, he and Joyce working together have, you know, done a lot to make uh, us what we are today. He's wonderfully knowledgeable, and he's very committed to the topic. He's passionate about uh, preservation. Um, he provides consistently solid reviews of projects, such as the one tonight. He focused on the relevant issue, and which enabled us to focus our discussion. And he's been very involved in getting grants for the city. Um, Joyce was telling me that many cities just never have any grants, and I think we're a little bit spoiled because we've had quite a series of them. And something that um, people don't necessarily know, um, the city always needs to bring forward matching funds, and you can count staff time. And part of the, the allocation for the city is Joyce's time and Robert's time. Robert is donating time for our projects, and that's because he... Um, his passion about um, preservation in Edina. Uh, we've received excellent support from the rest of the city, from the planning department, letting Joyce uh, be our person, uh, from communications. Um, their team is, is doing this meeting tonight, but it's done interviews, it's done the website, it's done announcements, many other things. I, I think probably there have been a few people involved from that department, but we're very appreciative of that. Um, and they've been, when we've worked with them, they've been very good to work with. And we'd also like to, to um, thank the administration, the new administration, here in Edina, uh, Scott Neal and Karen Kurt. Both have come to our meetings and shown a lot of enthusiasm for our agenda. And uh, I think um, I was at a meeting earlier this week with a bunch of other chairs um, dealing with another topic. 
and everyone was very enthusiastic about how they've been doing their jobs. They feel like the boards and commissions are getting much more attention than maybe they did in the past. Um, and then the consul. The consul has been a, a constant supporter of heritage preservation. Um, we had an excellent working session with them, and then they have also shared an interest that, that we've had with um, neighborhood preservation and with Southdale Shopping Center. And those projects, we've had some ups and downs with, but we've stuck with them, and I think we are on the same page with them. And I also find I would close by mentioning the Dine Historical Society, where we've you know just done partnerships with them every year. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking with, after these remarks, I should almost close the meeting, but I think we do have some other agenda items um, that maybe we should uh, um, make sure that we we cover. Um, Correspondence and petitions, have we received anything this month, Joyce? You did receive one email that I provided for you in your packet. Right. Which we discussed in the context of the project. Um, I've kind of moved my comments up into the section. Do, do any of our board members have any comments they'd like to make about, in general, or about specific things they've been working on? I would like to add something. Uh, last month I had stopped at the Dine Historical Society to get some more information on uh, what they had for Southdale because uh, of our, our intent to see what we can find over there. And uh, in talking to their curator, uh, Marcy Matson, uh, I've known her for years but told her I was on the Heritage Preservation Board and she thought that it would be good if I came to one of their meetings and thought, well, you know, I could probably be like a liaison and just, you know, try to make sure we're all on the same page and we're talking about the same things. And so I showed up at the meeting and I was voted onto the board. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure how that happened. Um, and so I was at the uh, last uh, Edina Historical Society meeting just uh, last week. And one thing that they would like to do with the Heritage Preservation Board is to meet and kind of talk about long-term uh, plans for the Cahill School and the Grange Hall to see what uh, what our intentions could be, if we have any ideas of what we would like to do with that area, and uh, partner with them and see uh, what we could do in the future. Thank you. I, I would um, mention that there's this uh, Grandview area um, planning project, which that little piece of land is part of the project. How it exactly fits in is, is not clear. There was... Um, were some focus groups the city did and the Heritage Preservation Board was involved and we kind of rate and the Historical Society was there too. So how does that fit in in that project? So it would be good if we would um, sit down and talk with them and maybe present a united front. Exactly, yes. Um, do we have other comments from our uh, members? Okay, um, any additional staff comments? Well, um, not really. I just would like to have perhaps um, Bob Moore can introduce the, uh, video, the movie about the building of uh, St. Stephen's Church. Just give us a little flavor for how it was made, who made it, and, okay. then, and then we'll show the movie. Uh, these are actually home movies that my dad took in 19, I believe 1936 or 37 when they started clearing the lot after the Grange Hall was moved from uh, Wooddale and 50th Street up to just about its present location up here by City Hall uh, for the building of St. Stephen's. Uh, my grandfather was chairman of the building committee, so I think he probably had something to do with why my dad was taking movies. Uh, but the, um, I spliced these together for St. Stephen's, and we gave them the originals for their 50th anniversary in 1988. And... Um, it was a lot of little reels to splice together. So when this starts out, I actually found the last piece of film and I put it at the beginning because I didn't want to splice it all back together. But it starts out with the building of the uh, bridge over Minnehaha Creek right by St. Stephen's on Wooddale Avenue. And then uh, we go to the uh, sign of uh, the new church being built, which I believe is taken, um, it's, the sign is facing 50th Street and when you're looking at the sign, you're looking south to give you some uh, guideline of it. But it's uh, really interesting. You can see Wooddale School in the background. Uh, it starts out with them clearing the lot, and then it goes to 
um, the um, groundbreaking, then they have laying of the cornerstone, and then there's actual uh, footage of them working on the church, and it was uh, a lot of uh, manpower back then. Not, not many machines. It's, uh, it's really quite interesting. Great. Thank you. And I think our TV gurus are going to be showing up for us. how mo old movies have the numbers that run.
his website and go on to watch a meeting under and it'll be under other meetings because usually go find the city council the in the planning commission if you click on other meetings you can find our heritage preservation board meeting and you could be able to view it uh, there as well it was great thank you thank you um, our next meeting will be um, on January 10th 2012 and I will uh, now entertain a motion for adjournment. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much.